Hey everybody, this is Doa, and uh, guess what? There's a new Gundam card game coming out, and uh, this excites me greatly for uh, many reasons, uh, which I'll go over right now. So, I, like uh, many of the other people in North America, started off with Gundam Wing as my first Gundam series, and I've been a big fan of giant robots since as long as I can remember. I played with Transformers when I was a kid, even GoBots a little bit, you know, basically anything big and mecha, whether it was piloted or not piloted, I tended to love. And then when uh, Gundam came along, I was like, oh, this is so cool. Gundam Wing got me into watching the other series, which then I find out, you know, the Universal Universal Century stuff is just even better. And then I started building a ton of model kits when I lived in Korea. So uh, along with that, I've always played competitive card games pretty much since I was 10 or 11 years old or so. So now that we have this sort of intersection of my love of Gundam with my love of card games, uh, I'm pretty hyped about this card game coming out. So there's some information out there. That's what we're going to go over today is as much as we know about the rules, about the game, uh, not everything is out there yet, but enough is there that I thought it would make an entertaining video. So let's jump right into it. So, first of all, we'll need to know what we need to play the game. So, here's what they have told us, Bandai, uh, that is, uh, has told us what we need to play the game. We need a deck, obviously. We need a resource deck, which is something that, if you play, like, the One Piece card game that Bandai also makes, is something from that game. We need uh, token cards, which looks like they're kind of generic versions of different aspects of the game. There's a base one there, there's a resource one there, and then there looks like a, a basic Gundam there. Um, and uh, then we also need damage counters too. And and the damage counters thing at the end is actually the thing that excites me most on the screen because uh, mostly uh, historically, from what I understand, uh, Bandai card games have generally operated on sort of a, a battle power system, right? Where it's like, I have my number <clears throat> versus your number. And uh, if my number is bigger than your number, my guy beats your guy, right? So... Having damage counters is really interesting because now we have the potential for persistent damage, for things to fight and stay on the board afterwards. And I really love that part of card games in general, just building up my board, fighting with what my opponent has, and then how those things interact kind of determines the winner. And so being able to extend that, make it more of a back and forth, uh, is really, really cool. And uh, the fact that we have the little 3-3 at the bottom of that Gundam token there uh, makes me think we've got uh, power and toughness. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. So I think it's cool that we uh, maybe have a, a game with persistent damage coming in initially. We have a little bit of deck build building info on the screen as well. The deck uh, will contain exactly 50 cards. So that's kind of interesting there, where some games are like minimum. This game is exactly uh, up to two colors of cards may be included. I believe initially we've got... Uh, blue, green, white, and yellow for the four colors, uh, and I'm sure they'll add more on over time, and then up to four of the same card may be included. So four ups in a 50-card deck means that you're going to have a very consistent strategy. Um, games like Star Wars Unlimited, for instance, have three cards per in a 50-card deck. Uh, games like Magic the Gathering have a four of in a 60-card deck. So four of in a 50-card means that if you want to see something and you put four of it in your deck, you're going to see definitely one, if not two, every game, unless something goes very badly for you drawing-wise. So it looks like just from the deck construction alone, this is going to be a game where your strategy theoretically can be performed very consistently, which again, I think is, is generally a plus for card games. I like to be able to make a deck and then know that I'll be able to at least execute the strategy I'm trying to execute every game with that. So a little bit about what you need. All right, we need a play space as well. So here it is. Here's the basic uh, play mat, play area, whatever you want to call it for the game. Uh, going from sort of like, oh, I have to do it left to right, which is opposite for me, but left to right for you guys. Uh, we have our base in the upper left. So that's kind of interesting. There's going to be a base card that sits up there and kind of uh, protects your shields, which are your life in this game, it looks like. And uh, if you read the text there, you get an EX base at the start of the game. So it looks like you get one of those generic sort of token cards at the start. And then from then on, you can deploy more base cards from your deck there. So that's uh, that's kind of interesting. Or I suppose it could be in your shields as well, in your, in your life, because of how that works in the Bandai games. Usually the life is from your deck, and then when you take a damage, you flip it, and then you can do things with it that way. Um, we've got the battle arena. Looks like that's where all the units go. We've got the resource deck area and the resource area, basically the same as what we would see in a game like One Piece. 
Uh, and then the deck area of trash, basically the same there. So nothing really out of the ordinary here compared to a lot of the other Bandai games, except for that base area. The base area is really intriguing to me because uh, it seems like you'll be able to have a card that sort of influences your strategy as a whole, but also offers some protection for your life. So I, I like that. I think that's a little evolution of some of the play concepts that we've seen in some of the other games from this company. So that's that's pretty neat. Let's move on to look at the actual cards in the game here. Here we have the unit cards. So as you can see, this is all, oh, by the way, all this information is just ripped from the main website. I'll link it below if you want to go check that out. Uh, that's where I copy pasted all this from. Um, units are deployed in the battle arena. Up to six units may be deployed. So that's actually one greater than, uh, again, I'm going to I'm gonna talk about One Piece a lot in this because that's the, the other Bandai game that I play the most of. And in that game, you can have up to five units on the board at once. Uh, this one, you can go up to six. Again, I think that really kind of enforces the idea that we're supposed to be having units out there that are lasting, that are fighting back and forth. I think that's pretty cool. Can't attack the turn they're deployed. That's pretty normal. Um, and then this is a really interesting thing about this because uh, we have unit cards and then we have pilot cards. And we're going to look at the pilot cards next. But as you can see right now, when a unit is paired with a pilot and the link requirements are fulfilled, that unit becomes a link unit and can attack immediately on the turn it's deployed. So what that means is if you look at the unit cards, look in the bottom left there. You see on the Wing Gundam, Hirayui. You see on the uh, Gundam RX-78-2 uh, on the right side, you see Armor Array. Those are the matching pilots from the lore that go with the Gundam. So these are the pilots from the you know cartoons that go in the mechs. So... I, I love that a lot, actually, that we have matching pilots. I think uh, that's a, a something, in my opinion, that was vital and necessary for them to include in this game. So I'm excited that not only do we have uh, pilots and units as two different cards and they can combine, but that we have a bonus for including the matching pilot to the Gundam, which is, is cool in a very thematic way. Uh, when I play card games, I like to be competitive. But I also really like it when I can feel like I'm sort of living out the fantasy of that card game, you know, whether it's whatever IP it is, right? I can feel like I am those characters doing that thing. So matching the right pilots to the right Gundams, I think, is a really important thing to have in the game. So I'm very glad to see that. Um, one of the other really intriguing things about the unit cards for this game is if you look at the upper left, you have a level and a cost requirement. So what that means is the level requirement is how many resources you need to have available before you can play the card. So, for instance, using the Strike Gundam in the middle as an example, even though it only costs two, you only need to turn two resources sideways to play it, you can't do that until you have at least four resources on the board. So, what does that mean from a gameplay standing? That means it's a, it's a gate to keep powerful units from coming out earlier, of course, but it also means that you can have powerful cards that have low costs because you want to be pairing the cards with the pilots at the same time or pairing, you know, a card with a, uh, you know, with a uh, command card. We're going to look at those later, the kind of the spell cards. So uh, the fact that we've got a lot of low cost stuff gated behind high resource amounts means that uh, I, I see this game as going to be something very combo based, which is going to be interesting to see play out, too. So that's a I've never I don't think I've ever really seen something like that in card games before where you have low resource cost but a high amount of resource requirement. Uh, it's a really interesting concept in terms of resource management. So I'm very curious about how that's going to end up working out. Moving on to our next type of cards, we are going to see, click it, there you go, pilot cards. So a pilot is paired with a unit in the battle arena by placing it underneath the unit. Each unit can pair with one pilot. That makes sense. Usually you can't cram more than one person into a little Gundam cockpit. Uh, when a pilot is paired with a unit, it gets the attack power and the hit points listed on the pilot card. Additionally, the paired unit gets a listed pilot ability. A pilot can pair with any unit. Uh, I think that's important. You know, it's cool to have matching pilots and, and uh, Gundams, but you don't want to restrict it too much. So good that you can put any pilot under any Gundam. And then you just get the little benefit if they have the right one there. So you can see you'd sort of slide it underneath the Gundam card so the plus numbers would match up with the base numbers on the unit itself. Uh, I, I really like the design of these cards, actually. I, I was a graphic designer for a while before I got into... Uh, competitive gaming content into esports and things like that. So every once in a while I see something that kind of like, uh, you know, triggers that little graphic designer part of my brain. And 
What I really love about the design of these cards is obviously they, they fit nicely. You slide them under there. But what really stands out to me is that you've got the little image of the character's face in the bottom right so that you have the little visual of who's piloting the mech at the same time. I just think that's really neat. That's a totally unnecessary, really nice little touch they put onto these cards. Uh, and I think it's cool. Aside from that, you've got the same uh, level and cost requirements. Um, one thing I want to direct your attention to is the burst on the, the main thing. Burst seems to be that if this card is one of the cards in your life and you take that damage and reveal it, you can do what it says on the burst effect right away then. And that's a, a common thing that's called trigger in uh, One Piece, for instance. And it's a common uh, trait of uh, Bandai card games. But uh, glad to see it again in this one because I think it's fun. You know, when you attack somebody, you do some damage, there should always be a little element of tension, you know? It's pretty neat. Uh, so, any more to add on to that? Not, not really. You can see little link abilities uh, when, they get, uh, when they get matched up with the pilots. Sometimes it's just being on a unit, sometimes it's being on the specific unit, but either way, you know, glad to see the, uh, the pilot cards in there. Moving on to command cards. So, command cards, I'm just going to keep reading the little text box from the website just to, as a start for all this. Command cards are the one-time use cards that give you an advantage in battle. Some commands can be activated during your opponent's action step, while others can be treated as a pilot. So, that's kind of interesting right there, is that on the right, you see uh, Quatra there from Gundam Wing, uh, and he can be a command card and a pilot card, I guess. So we have to have four resources. We pay one for it. Uh, during this battle, your shield area cards can't receive damage from enemy units that are level four or below. Or, okay, so it protects you against the lower level units that are out on the field here. But then you also attach it as a pilot. Now, again, we don't have the full scope of the rules. I would imagine this is the card where you play it, you get the action, and then you attach it as a pilot. But I'm not 100% sure on that. We need to kind of get more details on it, so don't quote me. Either way, um, you know, your standard sort of one-use cards, these will have powerful effects here. For instance, first contact, uh, place one EX resource uh, as a burst, so if you reveal it from your life. Uh, or main, you play it during your turn, place one rested resource. So if you play it during the main, you get a permanent extra resource, a little bit of ramp there. And if you get it from your life, you get a temporary extra resource uh, immediately because you notice it doesn't say rested. It would come in as uh, active. So that looks like a pretty good card in itself. It's also from one of the, the funniest scenes in Gundam history where, uh, you know, she hands Hero a birthday party invitation. He tears it in half. Wipes away a single tear from her face and then whispers, I'll kill you in her ear, which is, which is awesome. I look forward to recreating that um, in real life with that card someday. Uh, but there you go. Yeah, so your, your average one-use cards, obviously a core tenant of a lot of card games. And then we have base cards. Okay, so base cards are really, really interesting to me. Remember when we went uh, and looked at the battle arena, there was a space for a single base card just above where the life is. It says it's deployed in your shield arena, life shields, interchangeable term. Uh, use bases to protect your shields and use their abilities to support your strategy. No more than one base is allowed. That means no more than one base on the field at a given time. You can have, you know, four of a certain base in your deck, of course, if you want to have a chance to draw that and play it out there. Um, but yeah, this is interesting. Look at uh, these are they look like unit cards to a certain extent. They have uh, power and toughness in the bottom right. Uh, but it seems like this is something where you need to power through it and destroy it before you can get to your opponent's shields. So uh, that's kind of cool. Add a little bit of extra protection to your life totals here. There's uh, a spot for damage in there, so I wonder if we're going to see some bases that can potentially do damage back to your opponent's units, which is pretty neat. And then you have uh, you know, a burst effect that seems universal across the ones we've seen so far of immediately deploying that base. So that's kind of an interesting little um, that's an interesting little booby trap to put in your life, right? Where if your opponent reveals that base, you're like, all right, I'm playing it, slam the base down. And then suddenly their entire attacking plan might get a little bit derailed because now they have to power through this extra health that's standing in the way of your life. So this feels like the type of game that is, in my opinion, I'm going to guess that it's not going to be a best of three. It's going to be a best of one in a competitive setting because it seems like there's a lot of factors in here to kind of slow down the damage that's done, both in terms to units that are on the field and in terms to your life. So with that being the case, uh, I'm hoping we get a very deep back and forth competitive experience that a single game can tell us definitively who the better player is. And it seems like the bases are kind of an indication of that. Um, 
What's kind of interesting too is that both of these bases have a deploy effect of add one of your shields to your hand. So it does take away one of your life, but it does give you that card draw essentially. You do get an extra card in your hand with it. And then it has an extra effect on the Archangel on the right, uh, activate main. That's during your turn. Once per turn, pay two. Choose a friendly unit with blocker, set it as active. It can't attack during this turn. So that uh, lets you use blocking units. Blocker is going to be a trait where those units can get in the way of your opponent's attacks. And it looks like you can, you know, maybe attack with one and then stand it up again before the end of your turn to make sure it's ready to block during your opponent's turn. So that's kind of neat to see. So base cards. Very, very fascinating little uh, add to this game that I think is going to give it a lot of uh, unique flavor compared to a lot of other card games and a lot of unique strategy and uh, game design avenues maybe that you can go with. Very, very cool. The turn phases. So here's the basic turn phases. Uh, nothing super surprising to see here. You, you know, you have your untap step essentially. You turn all the cards from horizontal to vertical, draw a card, and then resource phase, draw one card from your resource deck and place it in your resource area. So again, I'm going to go back to One Piece as the Bandai game I'm most familiar with. In that game, you actually place two resources, two new resources every turn. So you tend to ramp very quickly. You play big stuff in that game very, very quickly. In this game, it's only one. So you are kind of restricted from not being able to play expensive stuff right away. Um, you might end up with kind of a similar level of uh, power advancement throughout the game, though, because the powerful cards are cheaper. They just require more units. So if you think about an eight cost unit in one piece, you'll get to eight resources in, you know, three turns after the game begins. If you go second, right, two, four, six, eight. Uh, that's four, essentially, four resource generation phases. And in this game, say you have a powerful unit that costs two, but it has a gate of uh, level four, then you'd get there in the same amount of time. So I'm curious uh, how this is going to actually affect the pace of the game in the end. Uh, where it's one per turn, it seems like that would slow things down, but yet the uh, level system on the card cost, letting the individual cost of powerful cards be lower, might mean that it ends up being about the same I, I am curious about how that'll work out, so we'll just have to wait and see with that. Uh, then you have your main phase where you just do things, play cards, attack, all that stuff. And then uh, end turn, you know, I guess if there's anything that happens at the end of your turn on one of your cards, that'll occur. And then it'll become your opponent's turn. So pretty, pretty normal stuff across the board with that. And that more or less covers the rules uh, and gameplay information that we have so far with the game. Uh, one last thing to take a look at, and there you go is the featured series. So this isn't really a gameplay kind of thing. This is more of a, a lore kind of thing. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the five different Gundam series that they're going to use for the first set of the game and kind of go over each one um, and my opinions on that. So on the left, you've got Mobile Suit Gundam. You've got the original. You've got the 1979 anime, which, by the way, go back and watch that. It absolutely holds up. The story is great. The characters are great. The animation is really good for its time, actually. And if you are a Gundam fan at all and you haven't watched it, you definitely owe yourself to go back and watch the original series. I know there's like summary movies that are out there and stuff, but I think there's something really special about going back and experiencing the original Gundam, you know, as it was presented on television. So uh, glad they are including that. You have to, right? It's the original. Uh, then we have, uh, again, uh, I would say the original Gundam series for more, most North American fans, which is Gundam Wing, back in the, what, late 90s, early 2000s, this was on Toonami. On uh, Cartoon Network, they had uh, this, like, Toonami segment, which was all the anime stuff, and so that's where a lot of people saw their first Gundam series. That was me, that was a lot of people I know, and there's just some really iconic uh, suit design in that series, too. You've got the, the Wing Gundam itself. You've got, uh, man, like all of the main five character Gundams are like so unique that you've got the Death Scythe, you've got uh, the uh, villain's uh, mech, you've got the, the Tall Geese, which I think the Tall Geese is one of my favorite mech designs ever in the, he in the history of mecha going across any series. So, you know, you, you got to include Gundam Wing, right? There's a lot of cool mecha design in it, fan favorite, especially for the North American crew. So definitely an easy include for the first set here. Uh, then we have Mobile Suit Gundam Seed. Uh, another fan favorite uh, because of mecha design, I know in the uh, Gunpla world, in the model kit building world, the suits from this line are very popular. I built a few of them myself, but I have to confess, I've never I've never seen Gundam Seed. I need to go back and watch it. There's a lot of series, and, and 
I don't know why I've never gotten around to watching Seed. I gotta finally do it now that the game is coming out. But I can tell you from experience that the model kits and the suit design in that show is extra cool. So I think that's a, a good reason to include it. Then we go on to uh, my favorite Gundam series ever, which is uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn. I absolutely love the design of the main Gundam in here. You see you've got kind of the... You know, sort of plain looking unicorn Gundam, but then it will sort of uh, transform. Everything opens up. It turns into a very cool looking Gundam with this sort of like pink glittering psycho frame kind of thing going on. And that changes throughout the series. Again, another another anime with just great, great suit design, great mobile suit design and a really good story, too. This is also the second in our four that we're looking at, our five that we're looking at. That's set in the Universal Century, which is sort of the main timeline for the Gundam universe. Uh, I tend to prefer series from the main timeline uh but you know other people like the side stuff to wing seed whatever but uh unicorn is is just an awesome series great mech design and so i think that's a, and it's one of the newer ones i think it came out in what 2016 if i remember right so uh, a good one to include and speaking of new we've got the newest anime uh we've got mobile suit gundam the witch from mercury this is one i haven't watched all of yet uh, i started it it, it was okay, but uh, it didn't really grab me in the first couple episodes. Um, I'll have to go back and finish it at some point, but it is the newest one. So, you know, naturally, we're going to have to include that there, too. I think the the Ariel is a neat-looking Gundam design, so uh, I'm, I'm curious to learn more about the series and see more of the suits from it. Um, but it's one that I haven't quite watched all the way through, but it makes a lot of sense that they'd include it. And so there you go. Yeah, a little bit of thoughts about you know, why they included the series, why they did, and that's kind of all the data we have out there for the game right now. We know that there's a launch event coming. Um, I have been invited to it, which I'm incredibly excited about. It's going to be at the uh, the Space Center in Houston, which is just the coolest location ever to have something like that. It makes so much sense, right? Humanity is going to the stars in uh, the Gundam series, so why wouldn't we have our launch there? It makes perfect sense. Um, but beyond that, uh, yeah, the, I guess I'll just make more stuff as more information becomes available, but I think you can tell I'm I'm a bit excited about this card game series. And and again, I've I've said it before. We live we we're living right now in such a great era for card games. There are so many good games coming out, and this just adds to the stack of already awesome tabletop experiences you can have out there. So get out to your local game store, uh, play some card games, uh, give One Piece a try, uh, give some other stuff a try, and get ready for uh, for Gundam. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting. Thanks for watching.